guys welcome to a really quick vid now it's Sunday and I thought I'd quickly do it now because Aaron's just quickly nipped to get a couple of groceries that we couldn't get hold of yesterday on our weekly essential shop because as you know we're in this horrible lockdown and we can only go shopping once a week that's the rules really if you bend them that's your choice but we just go on a Saturday get all our shopping if we can't get anything we do come to a different store um, it's the equivalent of Walmart, it's just an Asda store if we can't get what we need at Aldi and Waitrose. So yeah, we've just come out quickly, but the um, reason I am quickly hopping on it is because I did a vid on Friday and said I was 11 DPO. Well, I miscalculated. I went quickly back through my diary and as you know, I hit my peak surge on the clear blue fertility monitor on day 12. That was my peak. That meant I was ovulating between 24, I think, it, I think it's this 24 to 36 hours away from ovulation it's very sketchy because no one knows when it can be as loose as 12 to 48 hours your ovulations away but usually on this clear blue monitor it does say I'm sure 24 to 36 hours away from ovulation when you hit your peak the LH surge has been detected definitely baby dance because you're anytime gonna ovulate that's what it means so correct me if I'm wrong but normally ovulation kits all of them across the board say 12 to 48 hours away from ovulation when you hit your peak but this clear blue one is testing the serum so it's super sensitive so when you hit your peak they say do it on the peak and do it the day after to guarantee a good chance of getting pregnant it's not going to guarantee you 100% remember you know they say if you don't have um a, if you don't show signs of peak and you just test high all the time after three months you need to get a GP's appointment because there could be something a little bit underlying, an underlying issue. But if you're hitting the peak and you don't get pregnant, I think within six months on the monitor, they do say get an appointment at the doctors to rule out any other thing like vitamin deficiency or PCOS or anything like that because they are so um, invested in the product that they're making. So they do say guaranteed success should happen long as you're not premenopausal, long as you haven't got underlying health issues, long as you've not got PS, uh, PCOS, you should have a reliable success rate within six months of trying on this machine. But as I say, if you don't hit success in six months and your periods are regular, you're hitting peak and you're still not getting there, do go and source an appointment. That's what they say. So I've hopped on here. I know it's a bit gabbledy goop all my quick language I'm trying to get out as much as I can before Aaron comes back to the car just to say yeah so I hit my peak 12 um, day 12 of my cycle my second peak was day 13 and then I was still high on my peak on my monitor day 14 now high means there's still a good chance you can get pregnant so your LH surge has been detected on your peak it, your LH surge is still there on your day two and when you're high, it means you've still got some LH in your body and, you know, things are still looking good. It's eased off, it's gone down, but you're still high fertility. So it might mean that the egg's still in just there ready to fertilise. So it's always good if you get a high to try and get a baby dance in, which is what we did. We did the high, so we did a high, missed a day, then we got our peak and did that. We did the other peak and then we got a high the next day and we did it just to cover. So I counted one DPO as day 14 of my cycle, which was the first day I got a low, and that was when it was asking for a stick, and then that was the last time it asked me for a stick. That was my 10th stick I used, and yeah, it basically said low fertility. So I had my first peak Sunday, second peak Monday, high fertility Tuesday, Wednesday low. So Wednesday I counted one DPO. So it meant actually when I did my vid I was 10 DPO. That's when I did my pregnancy test and it was negative. So I'm holding off my pregnancy test. I am going to be good as gold as much as I can be. I, I literally got up this morning and had a wee. Made sure I had a wee quick as anything so I couldn't like debate whether to put in a monitor stick and do a test. One, I don't want to waste them. Two, I don't want to feel crap when it says negative. And then I've got all of today and all of tomorrow just waiting for my period because the likelihood of it saying negative and being a positive is quite narrow now because Clear Blue, again, so invested in their product, they're, they're like saying three days before you're due, it's a 74% chance of a result, a positive result, as in, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, and then ladies who test two days before a 96% rate, day before your period 99%, day your period 99%. So today I am 12 DPO, Sunday 12 DPO. So I always come on 14 or 15 DPO as you know. Um, 
so I'm just sitting it out so it's Sunday 12 DPO I'm thinking I should be on by Wednesday so I am gonna do my test on Wednesday if I haven't come on Wednesday morning is D-Day for me um, I am praying to God that we've hit the jackpot symptom wise I keep thinking do I feel sick but do you know what I took advice of a couple of you and because I've been on plant-based diet now for a year I've literally stripped back everything haven't I I was stripping back everything apart from the odd occasional milky drink um, I gradually about four or five weeks ago before Christmas crept in the eggs because I thought I'm gonna just incorporate maybe a little bit of egg in my diet because I was missing it that was fine Christmas time I did have some smoked salmon and some scrambled egg really thoroughly enjoyed it absolutely fine didn't have any meat or anything um, other than that and I was gonna have Christmas ham but I don't think I had it I can't remember now but anyway I wasn't gonna do meat but a few of you said why don't you just incorporate a little bit of meat back in your diet or a little bit more um, in your diet to see if that helps you fall and I thought do you know what anything's worth a bash now because where I'm on the second year of trying and I'm not bothered I'm not thinking I've had two years of trying and nothing I've had the two miscarriages I've had a chemical I have been through a lot I've had that mid-cycle bleed because of my low iron which I had to get sorted I had my mole removed where I had two intense like operations where I needed like anesthetic so I've had quite a lot on my plate, so I'm not thinking, oh crap, I've had two years of trying, unstressed, nothing's happened, something's wrong. So I'm quite happy, the seeds there, the eggs there. I've now been on my COQ10, which Louisa Ziesman recommended for quick um, results. I've been on that since July, so we've hit now nearly, the, I'm coming up like seventh month soon, but they say, to get a, a vitamin in your body working a thousand percent great, you need it in your body at least three months. After three months, it starts doing its thing. We know that. It takes a good three months to take in any vitamin to get in your body. Well, I've been taking this COQ10 now, like I say, it's um, six months, nearly seven months. So I think my body is really, really in tip-top condition now. I mean, I couldn't do any more that I'm doing. I have, like I say, slipped up on the odd occasional caffeine drink. And when I've come on my period, occasionally I thought, sod it, I'm gonna have a glass of wine. But very rarely, I don't drink. I'm not a massive drinker. When I do drink, it's like one glass of bubbly and then I'm like, do you know what? I didn't enjoy it that much. So, you know, I have got vitamins in me now that are doing their work. I've, I have sort of, um, Ch chopped and changed it as you know I was on like folic acid separate and vitamin D separate but I've gone back to my Pregnicare simply because I think the Pregnicare just gives you overall coveration it's got so many good vitamins in it when you look at it it's got a tiny amount of vitamin D in it it's got a tiny amount of iron tiny amount of magnesium tiny amount of copper zinc everything's in there and I was taking that every day of my pregnancy when I had my last baby I actually to be fair I never came off it from having my fourth baby I just kept taking it because to me it was an overall amazing multivitamin and I was feeding my fourth baby up until he was nearly two um, and it just gave me that extra boost with a nice rounded diet that I was on it just gave me that extra boost so I've only tweaked my vitamins like I say six weeks ago I went back to the pregnant care so the gynecologist I spoke to who's given me my progesterone which is all at the ready for when I get a BFP when I said to her I'm on COQ10 in its purest high absorption at 900 milligrams she went that is brilliant she said we normally recommend 600 to 1200 milligrams depending on your case if you've been on it for, she asked me how long I'd been on it and at the time it was four months and because it was back in October I had the chemical and that's when I spoke to her and she actually said to me um, how long have you been on it I said since July um, she said that's fine it'll start doing its work now she said it takes 90 days to create a good egg so let's hope all the eggs you've had now have been a little bit maybe a little bit daft not great quality and now the ones that you've really got absorbed with the COQ10 are going to do their thing she said and she sort of scribbled on paper she went yeah on paper from about November your eggs hopefully fingers crossed should be in tip-top condition she said but even young people in their 20s have the odd duff, duff egg 
she said you're not going to get every single egg every month that's tip top quality she said so just because you're a little bit older doesn't mean you're going to have duff eggs every time she said the fact you're on coq10 is amazing it's such a great vitamin so that really installed loads of positivity in me so what i'm trying to say to you ladies if, if i'm not pregnant i'm going to be upset because i've hit all the times and dates but I think it's onwards and upwards for me because I've definitely got a good source of um, vitamins at hand. They're all absorbed in my body now. I've not missed a day. I've literally not missed a day. When I get to about three o'clock and I think, oh my God, I've forgotten to take my other COQ10 with my um, capsule, my vegetable oil capsule, which is the DH Vital that Z uh, Zeta um, West recommends for good egg quality and good fertility. I, I obviously take two of those a day. If I've sort of got late with the vitamin intake, I still take my COQ10, but I just have a closer gap. Because you can take them with just like an hour gap if you want, but they just say do not take that COQ10 close to bedtime because it does create insomnia. And I have, the latest I've ever taken that is six o'clock, and they are right. I have been up till about midnight when I've taken it that late. So I try and get my last one in at about 4.35 if I can. And it's good to take all these vitamins with a meal or just after a meal so you're not on an empty tummy. But yeah, I'm 12 DPO, not testing yet. Gonna hold out till Wednesday unless I come on AF. And love and friendship to all. Please keep your um, comments coming in. And I forgot to say um, congratulations to Naomi. So happy for you, darling. She's just had a lovely baby girl last week and she's doing really well. Love and friendship to you. Um, and also Nikita, who is a friend on here as well. She thinks she might have had a faint BFP from her surrogate. So um, that is amazing. I wish you all the best with that. She's on a journey, which hasn't been easy because of a heart condition. She's having her stepsister ha as a surrogate and they've just finally had their positive OPK back in January and she thinks they might have a faint um, positive at 12 DPO. I hope it is a faint positive. I'm sure it is because the first response was a quite a good line to my eyesight and then you obviously had the clear blue as well saying pregnant so that's very good. So love and friendship to you Nikita as well. Um, if you want to mention let me know. Let me know where you are on your journey. I will keep you updated as always and I'll let you know where I am on my journey but yeah, definitely um, my vitamins are all in check. The monitor's all good. And I will let you know how I'm going. See you later, guys. Bye. Yes, I just listened back at that. And so what I was saying is why I, when I was saying symptom-wise, um, I went off track a bit, went on about my vitamins. So the only symptom I've got is CM still in abundance, but I did have that last month when I was late on my period. Um, loads of CM, I'm needing panty liners and it is that yellowy, creamy one. I do get when I'm pregnant, but again, I've had it a few cycles when I've not been pregnant. Um, definitely hotter than usual, but then I'm always hot just before my period, about a day or two before, and I'm always hot just before ovulation, so that could be correlating with that. But what I was saying about my meat is, I had meat, didn't I, tuna on Friday and I felt sick afterwards and I did warm up my coconut milk, which I don't usually do for my porridge. Um, that could have made me feel sick. But I did last night, for the very first time in 18 months, I made a beef stew because it's all cold outside. I thought I'd make a lovely heartwarming beef stew with dumplings for everyone. Um, a couple of the kids didn't want it, so I off offered pizza and salad as well. Um, but yeah, I had beef and I only had the two, well, about three small cubes of beef. The rest was like vegetables um, in like this very rich gravy. It was very delicious because it was all homemade, all nice, but I haven't had meat for so long. Um, and after it, I felt very gassy tummy, um, very bubbly. Aaron loved it, but I felt a bit gassy. So I'm not sure whether that's a symptom or whether it is just rich food. So let me know. But that's all the symptoms I have, a bit of CM and a bit gassy. Love to all, friendship to all, bye.